Uh, we have, the Prairie Wings have been here at Madeline Island Music Camp for 12 years now. Um, it, my husband, who's the horn player in the group, David Griffin, and I um, have been looking for a summer residency place for the Wind Quintet. We had previously been going out to Oregon, uh, which was a long way to recruit really great students. And, and uh, one of Dave's siblings uh, was up here um, camping and ran into these fabulous facilities. And so my husband made a cold call to Tom George. And it turned out the timing was just right. You know, there's not a lot of opportunity for woodwinds to play chamber music, and um, we have a wonderful repertoire, but there's this rich history in the string culture, and that's part of why I got started here. But um, the woodwinds, I, you know, I, I can't think of another camp off the top of my head that is no. exclusively devoted to woodwind chamber music like Madeline Island is. Right. And, um, you know, aside from that, the, the facilities, the island, the setting are just perfect for music making. Talk some more about the... Uh... Absolutely. I think um, especially when um, you're coming from the big city, Chicago, or you're going to a university as a student, um, this gives you a chance to step back and appreciate nature. Um, I love the chance to wake up and it's cold and crisp out and ride my bike to work. Wow. And there's something to be said for the students just being able to remove themselves from technology almost entirely, remove yep. themselves from work worries, school worries, and just focus on the thing that they love to do, which is make music. Um, well, uh, I think the unique thing about our camp is the faculty are just the five members of the Prairie Winds. We're a quintet, uh, so one on each instrument, flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, and horn. And uh, we have known each other for a very long time, 18 years, did we figure out? Yeah, the quintet's been together 18 years. Sue and I are the veterans of the group. We met each other in 1989. So that's closer to a quarter century at this point. I'm right. stunned to say. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that leads into a question I've been asking other groups too, and that is... Right. You know, in, in, in our case, which is a quintet, we, it's, we start off the camp actually with, a, with an hour and a half long talk with the students about interplay, inter exchange, and, and really, you know, an ensemble the chamber ensemble, that is, is, an, is like a family. But unlike a family, um, you know, y y family is always going to be family. A, a, a chamber ensemble can break up. And, but you don't want it to. So we have to teach the students, and we have to learn ourselves how to interact, right. how to behave. <laughs> and these are skills, you know, that, that are not only in chamber music, but they, they transfer themselves to all of life. And I, I feel so positively about what we're able to do at Madeline Island with regards to preparing these students for a life in music, but also a life as productive, meaningful human beings. Uh, you know, it seems... Uh, to some extent, although um, I find that when I play chamber music, I actually am able to express myself more than I normally am um, as a musician at, in an opera orchestra, for example. It's, it's more of a solo role. Sure, at times I'm accompanying a line, but it's a working together and growing together, which is the fun part. The great thing about chamber music is you, ha you have the opportunity to be a soloist, to you know, satisfy your diva tendencies. And then, then you also have this opportunity to learn how to, to work well with others, play well with the others. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's the best training alive for becoming a soloist and the best training alive for becoming a great orchestral musician and it's all packed into one little ensemble. Another question. <laughs> well, that varies by piece, but <laughs> um, I mean, on, on any given piece, a conductor, um, or I'm sorry, a composer may um, uh, give a tempo marking, dynamics, um, but the beauty of chamber music is, is you can set it for the moment. Um, <laughs> And occasionally cut a long piece into a shorter piece. <laughs> We're playing um, <clears throat> a transcription of Night on Bald Mountain and a work that is ordinarily 10 minutes. It's going to be about six minutes this week. And that's so, not because of tempo choices. <laughs> right. Something you've elected. <laughs> I've, other people I've interviewed have told me that some of the great composers put some of their best efforts into quartets and quintets. Tell me about that. Hmm. 
Hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm afraid that's probably more transferable in the string idiom than it is in the woodwind idiom. We, we have a few notable pieces. Um, I would say Barber's Summer Music is an excellent piece um, of chamber music um, soloistically, although I, I wouldn't say that it stands out as being, you know, remarkably better than anything he's written orchestrally. Right. The, 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 I think likely it's the, our string colleagues are talking about the Beethoven quartets or the Bartok quartets, which stand as magnum opi in, in the output of those composers that informed <laughs> so much of what they did. And um, I'm afraid we don't have that. No, we don't. <laughs> We're the poor, poor stepchildren a little bit in that regard. <laughs> How about the difference between uh, playing in a, in a big orchestra and in, in a quintet or a quartet? Wow. Well, um, I mean, first off, um, Playing in a quintet, you, of course, rely on one another to keep the ensemble together. You no longer have the leader of the conductor. And, and I find it very beneficial for me to hear now when I take my chamber music skills back to the orchestra. I listen across the orchestra as well as watch the conductor. I feel like it really helps me at my day job, so to speak. Yeah. So. You know, it's a very highly varied thing. We have students from the Indiana Jacobs School. We have students from, we've had students from the Curtis Institute of Music, from Eastman School of Music yep. in New York. We've had them from USC in California. They come from everywhere. It's right. truly a national draw, uh, this campus. And uh, we pride ourselves in getting some of the best in, uh, students in the world uh, right here in La Pointe. I hope they leave not just with better chamber music skills, but with um, skills that will help them in life as a musician. Um, um, for example, how to treat each other with respect and uh, kindness, how to um, pick apart the important parts of music like melody or rhythm and really um, put that back into the music and, and approach it in a different way. One of the things I think we do really well and that I, I, I just admire the kids for is we, we have a thing where they, they have to spend an hour of the week learning a barbershop quartet or doing an improv skit or um, doing a rhythm piece that imply, employs any of a variety of instruments. We've had students bringing in basically half a log to beat on for their, into the cafeteria <laughs> for their rhythm piece. It's quite a sight, I've got to say. And, you know, what is so great about that is it builds not only performing skills on, you know, rhythm, but it brings them out of their shell and it teaches them how to engage with an audience and bring themselves and make them more, themselves more than they are. And that's, I think, half the battle as musicians. And it's one of the things as teachers we often don't have a chance to go after is Okay, you're great on your instrument now. How are you going to be great with the audience? Right. With your instrument. Building that confidence yeah. as a musician and a person. So is there an element of team building in that too? Definitely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Um, why in this uh, crazy t time we live do you think the humanities are important, the arts the mu and music? I'm going to answer that one, if I might. Go ahead. This is um, something I feel extremely passionate about. And we are, we're in an era of STEM-guided uh, 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 um, teaching. Uh, that's sciences, technology, engineering, and <laughs> math. Um, and nowhere in any of those is the question of arts mm -hmm. or the humanities. And there is something inexorable about the preparation that one goes through in the practice room or in reading the Odyssey mm -hmm. or in understanding history on a very basic level that informs everything. And we've become a culture that's so intent, I think, upon and so focused upon specialization that we've forgotten how to learn to think and embrace the world as humans. And if I'm succeeding as a chamber musician and as a teacher and as a soloist, then I'm doing all of that with myself and with my students and my colleagues. I agree. And, and to add another step to it, I would say, I, I don't think we can be a successful people unless each of us has a unique viewpoint. And creativity and the arts and the humanities help us each find our unique viewpoint. It's kind of what makes us different kind of 
mammals from the rest. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Uh, you've been doing this a long time. You must have some success stories where students have gone on to uh, greater heights. Do you have anything, any comments about that? Oh, absolutely. Probably our biggest success story is uh, Bernard Scully, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Who he uh, Bernard is a horn player, and he was in our camp the very first year, and he went on to play in the Canadian Brass, principal in the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra, and is currently a uh, professor at the University of Illinois. Just fabulous career. Yeah, where he's uh, a colleague of mine and Tim's in the Prairie Winds. Exactly. We have Andrew Cuneo from the first year, bassoonist, who is now principal bassoon in the St. Louis Symphony. So we have others in. Um, uh, military bands. We have others that are playing with mid-sized orchestras. It's been a, a tremendous thing, I think, to see these kids grow. Well, this uh, this camp has survived for thirty year, almost thirty years. Next year, <laughs> uh, what do you uh, account for its success at, uh, surviving that long? A nonprofit like this. We wonder about that a lot. <laughs> 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 it's a unique place, uh, you know. It I is. think uh, we keep coming back to Tom George, you know, his his money yeah. raising, his friend raising, his vision of his the vision, right? Yep, it's got to be all on Tom, yeah. and the and the you know support staff he has around him. Right. It's just fabulous. Yeah, Dale's amazing. Jonathan is fabulous, yep. and um, everyone here. I mean, the the facilities are are really unique um, for how well kept they are the beautiful setting that they're in, and just how part of that vision is building a structure that, that will accommodate this, this, the madness that is Madeline Island Music Camp. <laughs> and and it's, it's fantastic. I told you, the tallest oak is nothing more than a nut that stood its ground. <laughs> <laughs> He's now incorporated that. <laughs> um, um, the wind quintet uh, the chamber music is, I think, unique uh, from string chamber music in that each of us produces a dramatically different sound. In fact, we produce our sounds in dramatically different ways, um, some with reeds, uh, some with just uh, blowing across the flute mouthpiece or buzzing lips on the horn. So, so we're creating sounds in such a different way. Our challenge as wind players is to blend those unique sounds. Um, which is very different than a string quartet where they would have more similar sounds. So. Yeah, we have this wonderful wealth, wealth of um, colors as a result of fundamental difference in production of sound. And along with that wonderful wealth of colors are the dramatic tendencies that each of our instruments have that are sometimes at odds with the other. And it right. creates a, what I hope is an inspired sound at times and also sometimes a terrifying sound from the perspective of the musicians is we try to blend this this little right. ensemble that is a bunch of misfits in some ways. Okay, let me just check here and see what I, what I... What are the most beautiful things about this island? You know, the, the, what I, I think I could speak for all of us when I say the moment we get on that ferry mm -hmm. in Ashland and the wind starts blowing through our hair and we see the lake and the island and it's almost always sunny when we come up here. I don't know how we get so lucky, but it is. And yeah. it's, it feels like this profound release from, from everything that it occupies us on a daily basis. And it's a perfect environment for music making. And then you arrive here, and Sue and I, and some other members of the quintet, ride bikes exclusively once we get up here. And mm -hmm. it is so nice to just get outside and ride like crazy, go play our instruments, teach a little bit, and ride like crazy. And it feels like this wonderful interface between art, environment, and culture. And then right. seeing the periodic black bear or coyote, I just saw a coyote run across the golf course <laughs> <laughs> a couple minutes ago. <laughs> Chasing a camper. <laughs> how about, uh, by the way, you just gave me the opening to the video. Uh, how about the, uh, the, the, the smells, the sights, the water, anything else? Would you like us to talk about the mosquitoes? Yeah. Oh, okay. excellent. <laughs> You know, our first, no, second year here, second year here, we had Bluebeard's Castle. 
Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, Tom and Dale uh, do such a great job of finding fantastic accommodations for, for the do. faculty. It's amazing. There was one summer, however, <laughs> where we found ourselves in a place that had a bedroom that was just mosquito infested. And right. that was my bedroom. And I spent every night all week killing mosquitoes <laughs> all night. I was so exhausted by the week's end. <laughs> and the walls were this macabre scene of just blood from the mosquitoes <laughs> everywhere. It was, it was desperately terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> and we haven't returned to that house, fortunately. <laughs> but uh, there are the mosquitoes. <laughs> there are. And this is a mosquito a year in particular. Yes, and I'm noticing on the walls of every practice room are little <laughs> smushed bodies. <laughs> you keep expecting to walk out and find a camper that's been completely sucked dry. <laughs> just a lifeless body. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. No. <laughs> so, so have you had a chance to do any kayaking or go to any of the parks or uh, any of that sort of thing? Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not yet this year, but in the past we've kayaked in, in I believe it's the state um, park state campground area in the lagoon um, and in fact this year I brought my son along he's 14 and he's an avid birder and he's been all over the island um, you know adding to his life list um, 90 percent of a teacher I'm reading a quote here 90 percent of a teacher's job is directing students to read what's plainly in the page the other 10 percent is attempting to incite their imagination about what's behind and between the notes. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I'd say that's largely true, although I guess part of the 90% would be the mechanics of the instrument. And we spend an amazing amount of time just getting someone ready to sound good. Right. <laughs> you know? Um, at, at this camp, though, in particular, I'd say the students are coming at us at a pretty high level, so right. I'm guessing the creative is more than the 10%. Yeah. It's probably 60-40 here, mm -hmm. I would say, maybe even 50-50. Right. Talk, about talk, about, talk to me about the mechanics of the instrument. Each one's they're very different, right? Yeah, well, the, you know, right. you, uh, the reed players, the double reed especially, they make their reed from nothing, just a couple Some. pieces of cane and <laughs> some wire and glue and... <laughs> I don't quite know how it works. Some of the alchemy. A little spit. Yeah, a little spit. And, and a prayer before each. <laughs> but, um, they, you know, so that that's always a worry because you come to Madeline Island, they're always complaining about, oh, the temperature dropped, or you know, the, there's a cloud drifting overhead. My reed's <laughs> acting different. What an excellent <laughs> <Yeah>. excuse. <laughs> and uh, clarinetists are far less uh, uh, problematic, oh. shall we say, <laughs> in this regard. Excellent. <laughs> And uh, flutes, you know, we just pull the instrument out and hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, so I th I'm rolling.